Hello and welcome, my name is Jeremiah and today we're going to go through the initial setup of S-Files. If you have any questions, you can refer to our help documentation at sfiles.io or you can reach out to us at test drive team at sfiles.io and we'd be happy to work with you if you get stuck or if you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. This first step will be to go to our app exchange listing inside of Salesforce and click Get It Now to install S-Files into your organization. Once you click Get It Now, you'll be prompted at the install page, just like installing any other app. And in this case, you want to install it for all users and click Install. This will take some time, and once it has completed, you will go back to your Salesforce instance, and we will pick up from there. Once the installation of the package has been completed, you can launch our wizard by typing installed packages and setup. And when you find S files in your organization, you click the configure button next to S files, and this will launch our setup wizard. Inside the setup wizard, we'll go through a number of these steps today in the setup, and we'll cover some of the other options in our demo video. If you haven't seen that, check that one out as well. The first step is to authorize the S-Files wizard. So you have to click this link and allow access to S-Files. This is going to allow S-Files wizard to do the configuration for you. Once it's blank, you click the X button and the wizard will refresh and you'll see that it changes. You will only have to do that option once. Now we can step into step one of our wizard. Here inside of step one, you'll see that we have a couple of options. We have option if you're a Salesforce admin but not a Microsoft Azure admin which I'll show you that workflow here in a moment but what we're going to select is that we're the Salesforce and Microsoft Azure admin and the wizard will prompt us through the steps that we need to do and build on the Azure side. The first step will be to open this portal to the Azure and this hyperlink will take you to your Azure portal and what you need to do here is you need to create a new registration. Here we're going to make an S-Files demo registration. And we're going to leave it uh, selected here as a this organization directly only, single tenant. And we're going to select web here in this option. And we're going to bounce back to the wizard. And we can get this redirect URI here. And we can click this button and copy it to our clipboard. And then if we go back to our app registration, we add that here. And then we click the register button. And this will create an app registration for S-Files to use. We'll see here that we're going to need an application client ID and the directory tenant ID. So if we come back to our wizard, so we'll click next. And here's where we'll populate the application and directory ID. We can get that information as shown from the app registration we just created. So if we copy those and paste them over, we can paste them here. And now we need to create a new client secret. So if we click on certificates and secrets, we'll click on a new client secret and you give your client secret a name and here we'll select the longest possible 24 months. When this does expire, it can impact your S-Files usage because it won't work unless it has a valid client secret. So there is an article on our website that will show you how through PowerShell to extend that indefinitely, and I recommend you follow that. And what you want to copy out of here is you want to copy the value and not the secret ID. And you want to save this value someplace safe um, because once you navigate away from this page, it will not be visible again. And you can leverage this client secret and this app registration that you're creating in your sandbox and in other sandboxes and eventually into production when you choose S-Files as your solution. So save it in a safe place and you won't have to create a new client secret. If you do have to create a new client secret, though, it is not the end of the world and relatively easy to do. So once we have that here, we will paste it in to our wizard and we'll click the next button. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add some permissions to our Azure app. And if we go over to our API permissions here, we're going to click add permissions. And what we want to add is graph, Microsoft graph permissions. And you'll see here it looks like a banner, but that's actually a button. So we can click on that. 
We can click Delegated Permissions. We'll see here that we already have user.read, so we just need to add the others. So we can write files.read, write down to files. We can find our files read write all, and we'll select that. And if we type sites dot read dot all, we can grab the sites read dot all permission, and we can add that and click add permissions. Then the next step is to grant this admin consent to these permissions to users, and you'll see that green checkbox, and now you are good to go. We can pop back to our wizard and we can click next. So here's where you type in your SharePoint domain name. You click next, you see that it renders out. So if I click next, here is where I'm going to make the name credential inside of Salesforce that I'm going to use to authorize S files to my SharePoint org. So we click on this link and it'll take us to creating a new named credential. And here we'll click new name credential. And in the wizard, we give you all the parameters that you need to set. And it is very important that you use these parameters that we provide here because the name and the URL are important to keep the same as it's leveraged by S-Files. And then here you leave certificate blank. You select per user and we select OAuth 2.0. And then we're going to select S files provider and we'll see the scope is blank. It's pending. And these two checkboxes are checked and that is good. We will click save and you will probably be prompted to sign into your Microsoft 365 account, or you could be redirected here. If you're prompted to log in, be sure to use the credentials that you log into your office 365 account with. And then once that's completed, you should be redirected back to this page and you will see that it is status authenticated. You cannot proceed until this named credential has been authenticated. Otherwise, none of the other steps in the wizard will function properly. So once that's completed, we can click next. What we have to do now is authorize our user through this named credential. So in this case, we'll click this link. This is also what your users will be presented the first time they launch S files. They will see verbiage like this and they will have to perform this action too. In this case, I'm going to authenticate my user and I'm going to click save. We'll see that it's pending and when I'm redirected, it will be authenticated. Once again, we cannot proceed to the next step until we have authenticated our user through this name credential. And you can verify if you need to, but if you get redirected, then you are authenticated. And we can click on edit next to my user and we'll see that we are authenticated. So once that's been authenticated, then we can move on to our next step. And this is where we grant permissions to our users for S files. So in this case, we're just going to pick the two user profiles that we're using and we're going to add them to selected. You can always launch this action again from within the S files wizard to just do this piece of the wizard. And we click next. And this is where we're going to select our SharePoint site that we're going to map S files to. In standard, this would be the site, the only site that you get to use. And in enterprise, this would be your default site that you're setting up. So you do have to select one here, even if you're going to use the enterprise and multi site later down the road. So in this case, we'll select S files demo. And then here we're going to select the document library. The only document library we have is documents you would select the one that's appropriate for you. And now we're gonna click finish and this will deploy our changes and we'll complete step one of the wizard and we'll launch a new section, the object setup wizard. And this is the part of the wizard that you will run for each object that you want to set S files up on. In this case, we're going to progress through and set S files up on the account object. So we go ahead and select account. You can select whatever object you want to there. This next step is to select what the folder will be named when you click the setup with SharePoint button in S files. In this case, we'll pick account name. You can select any field that you want or create a custom field that concatenates the information that you want to make the folder name. This is where we select the folder that we're going to have accounts mapped to inside of SharePoint. 
you have a whole bunch of options here. You can open in SharePoint, you can click refresh, you can select already created folders, or you can create your own folders or set the document library as the root. In this case, we're just going to select account and put our accounts in our account folder. Here are all the options for selecting visibility to these functions from within S files. So you can hide all these functions for your users or you can allow them. In this case, we're allowing them. This final one that is defaulted to blank is the auto setup folders on record. So if you select this, it won't present the users with a button, but instead the first time S files is launched, it will go ahead and set the account up for them. In this case, we'll leave that blank because we're going to play with the button and we'll click next. And this option is where you get to set the initial folder structure if desired. It follows this JSON structure, which we give you an example. I will just use the example here, but you can customize this to meet your business needs. So we click next. And here, if you wanted to cycle through that because you were setting up multiple objects, you could click this checkbox. But in this case, I'm just going to finish with the account object. And here it tells me that I want to put S files on the page layout, which we will do here in a second. Once you're ready to set up S files on the account, after you've completed the wizard for the number of objects that you want to set up, you navigate to an account record and you can edit the page layout here. Once here, you would select where you want to put S files in. In this case, I'm going to add it just to the details page at the top. And I drag my S files app into that location. Some pieces to note here is that you will see places where you can add all these overrides and we have tons of places and ways to customize S files. You can find supporting articles for all of these customizations on our website, sfiles.io, under documents. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. And a way to verify that it's going to work without exiting the editor is if it starts to render S files and doesn't throw an error here. So since we know that's good, we're going to go ahead and click save and we'll navigate back to the account record to test functionality of S files. Once we navigate back to the test record, we can see that S files is initializing. We can see that that account is made. We can see that there are the subfolders are made. And if we close the wizard, we can even verify functionality by taking some files and uploading them directly into SharePoint. So now we have a base set on account and we have folder set and we're able to upload. Let's go back to the wizard and take a look at some of those other parameters and options that you can set. And then we'll also show you where you can do some customization inside of the metadata that some of our articles will point you to. So if we just go back to setup and we go to installed packages again, we can launch the wizard. We click on the configure button and that'll launch our wizard. And we can see here that step one is completed. And if we wanted to set it up on another object, we would click this second button here. We can also have some handy links to our API documentation and experience cloud setup. You can also get to our regular documentation page here by clicking on documents. Or if you need to get support, you can click on support and it'll launch you to our support portal. Now, if we go back to the org settings, this is where we can select those users that give permissions to S files. You can come here and change that when needed. You can also click this edit settings button, which will take you to our metadata settings for the main object. And you can do overrides here if you need to do any kind of customization. Under the object settings, this is where you would get your unique key. So in this case, we can go to account. This is for putting it on the community or for doing other enterprise related setup. You can also click edit settings here, which will take you to that object's metadata settings. And here you can do overrides as directed by our article and knowledge base. The final thing to take a look at is our ID search utility, which is very useful if you're going to map to different folders or to different sites and document libraries, depending on which version of S files you choose. In this case, you can find all the necessary IDs for remapping or doing overrides. You can get the site ID, you can get the document library ID, you can get the subfolders ID, which is then used to map or remap or point S files to different locations based on parameters from within S files. So thank you for coming along with this demo. My name is Jeremiah again. If you do have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at testdriveteam at sfiles.io. 
You can also check out our knowledge base under documents under sfiles.io on our website. And once again, thank you very much.